Hey, my chariot racers! Welcome back to the Guiding Chariot. I'm TC, as you all know, uh, and welcome to our second edition of Chariot Chats. Uh, I want to start it off by saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate how many responses um, and messages I got about the first edition of Chariot Chats. I honestly was not prepared for it, and you guys are amazing and sweet and adorable, and I just I wish I could just hug every single one of you. Um, socially distanced doesn't allow that, but I'm sending you my love because I'm so grateful that you guys loved it. I love doing it, so we are going to do some more. Um, this is going to be round two. Um, so kind of like round one, I'm just, just kind of too excited to do it, so there's not a huge plan, um, but we're going to get through it together. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the astrology of the month as a whole, so, so kind of what's going on throughout February in the heavens above us, how it's affecting us down below. Um, we're definitely going to talk about Mercury retrograde for sure. Um, and then I did get a comment, so shout out to Zeta, because you're the one who started this. Um, I did get a comment kind of about crystals and, you know, some of their benefits. So I thought we're going to talk about astrology. We're going to talk about Mercury retrograde. Why not talk about crystals that will help get us through it? Um, I'm also going to add in a few of my favorites. So it's going to be a little, little more hand-picked, um, but if you guys want, you know, if you guys are, are into crystals like I am, Lord knows if you see my videos, there's always a whole army <laughs> on the table behind the cards. Um, so if, if you want more, like even like a crystal 101 or crystals for specific purposes, let me know. Drop a comment down below. Um, but yeah, we're, we're kind of going to focus on things that help us stay centered and grounded and help us get us through this retrograde as smoothly as possible. All right, so I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Let's get into it. First off, astrology for February. Nicely, actually, it starts off pretty, uh, maybe smoothly is not the word. Well, yeah, um, but right on the first, we have uh, Venus going into the sign of Aquarius, which is beautiful. Anywhere Venus is, Venus is always, you know, goddess of love and beauty. Um, so she helps to attract things to us. Um, and honestly, I'm going to give these, um, I was going to say readings, this isn't a reading. I'm going to kind of give this advice and details very generally, because um, again, astrology really comes down to your placements and where, what house each sign is in, because that's where this is really going to affect you. So I'm going to give it to you super generally, and you know, if you know what house you know, Aquarius is in, that's where most of this is going to be going on. So, you know, say it's eighth house, it's gonna be happening a lot with finances, relationships, joint, like joint commitments, um, ninth house, higher education, travel for some of you, um, fourth house, the home, um, fifth house, relationships, especially new relationships and romance and dating and all that fun stuff. Um, so again, it'll just depend what house this is happening in. So I definitely recommend if you don't know what your birth chart is, you can get it done for free online. Um, and then just find where Aquarius is. That's where most of this juju is going to be going on. I'm going to tell you what sign the planets are in, so it makes it easier for you to find. Um, but that's really how you'll know where it's hitting for you. Okay. Um, but anyway, tangent. Um, what was I saying? Venus. Venus moves into Aquarius on the first. So again, bringing a lot of, you know, gentleness and sweetness, possibly love, depending what house it's in. Um, but it's really going to magnetize that particular area. And what's actually really, really nice, there is so much going on in Aquarius. Um, I believe with Venus, I believe there's five planets all kind of hanging out in the house of Aquarius. One of them is Mercury, which is now retrograde. So that's a thing. Um, but having all those other planets in there with Mercury, there's a lot of good energy in there. So it kind of softens this particular Mercury retrograde. So if you tend to panic or you tend to have a lot of things go weird and wonky in Mercury retrograde, this one's kind of supported. So you can breathe a little easier. Do not stress yourself out. Um, if you see me look down, it's because I've handwritten a few hasty notes. So if you see me doing this, it's just because I'm making sure I'm talking about what I wanted to talk about. Um, oh! One other thing, with all of this happening in Aquarius, for my fixed signs out there, right? So all of the fixed signs, and even even if you're not like a, a fixed sign sun, um, all the fixed signs or planets that are in fixed placements, 
So that would be, oh, what, are, what are the fixed signs now that I think about it? So definitely Aquarius, for sure Aquarius, Scorpio, is it Taurus, is the Earth one? Yes, Taurus and I believe Leo are all the fixed signs if I'm remembering them correctly. See, told you, notes, I should have written that down. Um, but any planets you have in those particular placements, this like cluster of planets in Aquarius for sure can possibly be activating any of the four fixed signs. So if you have a lot of placements in fixed signs, um, or even if you're, your chart in general, very, very fixed sign heavy, you probably are gonna get an extra boost. You're probably gonna feel a little more charged up this month because of all the activity going on, right? So just something to be aware of. Um, so that happens on the first. Uh, on February 11th, so a little bit later, we do have a new moon in Aquarius. So now we have a sixth planet hanging out and doing magical things in Aquarius. I'm telling you, wherever Aquarius is, lots, lots of action going on in that sector of your chart. Um, this new moon, like any new moon, it's a time to plant intentions. Um, it's time to get your intuition and your thoughts right, setting up the plan for what it is we're trying to grow and cultivate, right? Um, like literally, it's like taking seeds and planting them in the dark, planting them in the dirt, right? So nothing is really going to happen right now, but we're laying the groundwork for what happens as the moon cycle or the lunar cycle carries on. Um, so beautiful time for that. Um, I would say relate those new intentions as best you can to that particular house. It is an Aquarius, so it can be goals that have to do with your friend circle, your social life, um, who, you, who you're kind of interacting and engaging with, right? Who your connections. Um, so it could be some things having to do with networking, right? Now, what we're networking on, again, is going to depend it, be dependent on your house. So depending where that is. Um, but there, it also may just be kind of unexpected, surprising shifts. Um, and changes, right? Because Aquarius, very unexpected, full of surprises, right? So this energy can definitely kind of create new opportunities um, that honestly are going to lead to some really cool, exciting things, but they may be major shifts, right? So it depends how you, how you use that energy, what kind of intentions you're setting, um, will kind of help steer what could possibly happen for you down the road, okay? So that's all going down on the 11th. Um, literally on the 12th, right after that, is Chinese New Year. Side note, um, the first day of spring is earlier than Chinese New Year. So if you're into feng shui like this guy, um, I've thought about doing a feng shui video too. Now, I am n no expert, but I, I just, I think it's really fun. I love the cures and it's, I don't know, I think it, it teases the practical, orderly rule side of me to like plan all the, the planets, uh, not the planets, but all the cure movements throughout the house. Um, I thought that would be kind of fun to talk about. So you let me know if you want to see that too. We have a third one this week. I don't know. Um, but just as a side note, if you're into feng shui, your cures should be moving on the 4th. So it's a little, move the cures on the 4th, but Chinese New Year is on the 12th. So it's, it's just early this year. The flying stars are just they're doing their own thing this year. Um, but that'll be super exciting. Um, after that, on the 14th, we have Valentine's Day. Yay! Um, whatever your thoughts are on Valentine's Day, you know, I hope you enjoy it and live it up. Um, but we also have some movement going on on Valentine's Day, which might help or hinder your plans. Um, so Mercury, our little retrograde friend, we're going to come back to him, don't worry, I haven't forgotten him. Uh, but Mercury, which is going to still be in retrograde, uh, will be in conjunction with Jupiter on the 14th. Now, this kind of is cool. This is actually a great thing. Um, so Mercury Retrograde, big time for revising and editing and, and reviewing and looking over things. With this conjunction in Jupiter, you may be going back to an old idea or, or something you wanted to start up or just something from your past that you, know, you wanted to build or create that maybe never really got off the ground. Jupiter always likes to bring luck and opportunity um, wherever wherever it goes. So this conjunction can definitely bring some new communication to help revive this old project of yours or this old passion of yours, whatever this is. Um, it may even be, depending where you know where this is placed, it could even be some type of contract um, or some type of deal that you were trying to work on in the past. Um, you may get a new little boost to that or some new communication to help you know kind of revise and bring that back to life. Um, 
And honestly, even with Venus there, Venus is also going to help sweeten that pot. So not only may, may there be new communication or new opportunities around this old idea, you're also magnetizing some more resources and some sweetness to that pot of just yummy goodness. Uh, so definitely be positive about that. But around the 14th, you definitely could hear hear something about something you thought you know was gone and laid to rest. It might get a second chance this month. Um, trying to think. Anything else? Oh, um, on the 17th, is it the 17th? Let's see if I can read my chicken scratch. Yes. On the 17th, uh, Saturn and Uranus, is it Uranus? Yes, uh, Saturn and Uranus make a square on the 17th. Now, yes, everyone gets a little afraid of Saturn. Saturn tends to make things feel a little heavy, feels a little rough. But again, all the planets, no matter what their aspect is, are trying to get you to grow, are trying to give you something more. They're always trying to help you, even if it doesn't feel like it, sometimes they are. They're trying to always help you. Um, so this particular square, so Saturn, yes, wherever Saturn is in, in your chart, um, definitely can start to feel, you might feel restricted, you might feel stuck, um, you might feel like it's, it's taking all of your effort trying to push forward and to progress. Um, and to kind of manifest whatever it is you're trying to bring about. This square to Uranus, this tension that's being created, right, by, by uh, Saturn trying to help us to grow and to push us into more, and it's probably making us feel a little uncomfortable. That tension in that square, right, is kind of like the, you know, if you shook up a bottle of soda with a cork and then it explodes. Uranus is giving you the courage and just the unpredictability and the random surprise energy to just kind of bust out and, and break through and do this thing, whatever it is. Um, so Saturn creating the tension that prompts you and activates you to move, acts or gets you to act and move beyond this kind of tension point. Um, so it may feel a little rough, might feel a little tense, but again, it's that uncomfortable feeling that's motivating you to move on to move further to get to the next level because oh i just don't like it here anymore i've got to do what i got to do to get up there right so might happen might feel a little strict but again it's pushing you to greater things um right after that on the 18th yes on the 18th sun moves into pisces which is great sun's moving on so it brings a whole bunch of new life and vitality to wherever pisces is in your chart so brand new phase for us so we definitely love that um, one thing I would say with the square and as the sun's moving, some things to consider is definitely where you feel super fixed. Um, when you think about kind of what I was talking about with that square to Saturn and Uranus, right? It's making things uncomfortable to push you, you know, into new spaces. So think about where you're being a little inflexible. Think about where you're so rigid or so stuck to a certain way of doing things that maybe isn't really helping you or isn't moving you forward. This this particular aspect can kind of get you to see these things and then from there if you're willing to just kind of be flexible and change and embrace different um, that's where you kind of get the magic and that's where you see the growth and the progress um, so definitely something to to consider as we move through this month it's about mid to late february right um what else do we have then february 20th happy dance mercury goes direct Yes, so that's when wherever Mercury is, so remember wherever Aquarius is in your chart, um, that's where we can start to see maybe some baby steps. You know, now we can start to see our actions and our planning, um, all the things we were kind of revising. Now we can see them starting to bear fruit. Now we're seeing, oh, now we're starting to move again. We're not stalled anymore. Great, love that. Um, we'll, take, look, well, let's take a little pause right here. So this, this will be a good moment to talk about Mercury retrograde. We're not going to talk about the crystals, we'll do that after. we got one more thing, one more astrology thing to talk about. Um, but Mercury retrograde. So, yes, everyone freaks out. I, I used to have tons of co-workers that would full on like, oh my god. I had one in particular, she cracked me up. She literally acted like the world was falling. It gave me the giggles every single time. So just know that whenever Mercury goes retrograde, really when any planet goes, re goes retrograde, it's not the end of the world, it's not trying to ruin everything, right? Again, like I said, planets are always trying to help you and support you. None of the planets are trying to mess you up and destroy you. It doesn't benefit them to do that, right? So it may feel crazy, but 
trust and believe, it's only pushing you to more. So when a planet is in retrograde, it is just an opportunity to revisit things, to look over things. So sometimes, like we have, uh, what did I say that was? Um, I think on, the, on Valentine's Day? Yes, on February 14th, when we have that Mercury retrograde conjunct with Jupiter. Sometimes it's an opportunity to look at something we thought had passed, look at something that we thought was long dead, and it might get a second life. There might be new communication about it. There might be another opportunity to get that thing off the ground. So sometimes it's revisiting in the sense that, you know, things can have a second life. Um, other times it can be tests. So I know everyone talks about an ex coming back during Mercury retrograde. Not a guarantee. Also doesn't mean you need to go back to them either. A lot of times it's the universe going like, okay, so you didn't enjoy that time with this person. And you were like, you know what? I don't want this. I don't like this. I'm just making sure. I'm gonna I'm make this person come back and say hello. And, and you show me through your actions, right? Because I want to see as, as Mercury, I want to see if you learned your lesson. So I'm going to put you back in this situation and see if you behave differently. Do you fall for the same stuff again? Do you have a different perspective and now they've grown and now you get a chance to try this over? Or, you know, is this still the same fool coming back acting up? And I want to see if you have the strength now to call him on his bullshit. Or just be like, oh, you know what? I don't want that. That's not me. You can keep that. I, bye. Bye. Right? So all these things happen. And of course, Mercury rules communication, um, phone calls, emails, texts, um, how you interact with the outside world, mail. So all those things can be a little funky. And again, they don't do that to like make you mad at your iPhone or, or make you hate writing emails, right? It's literally forcing you to reread everything, make sure all the details are in order, you know, dotting your I's, crossing your T's six, seven, eight times just to make sure they're all done and all correct. It's forcing you to reread. So you're checking every little thing. You know, so that's why you hear a lot of uh, people talk about it's not a good time to start a new business or sign contracts or make deals. It's not that it's a bad time. If you can avoid it, great, do it. You know, schedule schedule your things after the 20th, you know. Um, so it's not that it's a bad thing. Is it maybe a little more challenging than otherwise? Yes. If you don't follow protocol and, and dot your I's and cross your T's, could you end up having to redo things once Mercury goes retrograde? Yes, that is totally a possibility. But if that happens, it's just because you didn't do your due diligence. Again, this particular retrograde with Mercury, or any Mercury retrograde, not just this one, but Mercury retrograde is about me forcing you to focus in on the details, making sure you're reading the fine print, all those things. It's trying to raise your focus and your awareness to certain things. And if you do that and follow through and do what you kind of should be doing, everything will be fine. So it doesn't, it's not a guarantee that everything gets wonky during retrograde. It's just a little harder and we have to be more focused and more diligent in our actions and our choices, all right? So don't freak out, we will be fine. Um, so it's already retrograde, we're already in it. You're surviving, you're living, great job, you did it. Um, 20th will go direct. I always say, and I got this from um, an awesome astrologer I watch on YouTube, her name is Stormy Grace. Um, if you're into astrology or want to know more, check out her channel. It's amazing. Um, I get this from her where she talks about when a planet is coming out of retrograde. It's like someone just waking up in the morning, right? They may be moving. They may be up and awake, but they haven't had their cup of coffee yet. They're not at full speed yet. So even though he goes direct on the 20th, uh, 20th or 21st, I think, depending where you are in the world, even though he's going direct again, he hasn't woken up fully. He hasn't had the coffee. He's still a little slow. So again, give it some time. But then that, again, that's when you start to see forward progress again. You start to see the motion. It may not be up to full speed, but it's starting to break through again, all right? Last thing I want to talk about, is it the last thing? Maybe it's not. I have the worst handwriting on the planet. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Nope, uh, 25th, uh, Venus will move into Pisces along with the sun. So again, bringing that, that level of attraction. So new resources, possibly new love. Again, look where Pisces is in your chart. That's where that's going to be happening. But again, that same magnetism, that same beautification, that same gentleness is going to be following the sun into Pisces at the end of the month. So that's always exciting. Um, and then end of the month on the 27th, we have a beautiful full moon in Virgo. Um, so 
Full moon's always about releasing, ending, revising what needs to be ended, adjusted, all those things. Um, with this being in Virgo, this is actually really helpful. Because, um, you know, Virgo is our super detail-oriented, super practical sign, right? Um, if a protocol ever needs to be written, give it to a Virgo, because that's the person to figure it out and organize everything. So this full moon is going to be forcing you to look at where you need some reorganization, where we need to do things a little differently and tighten, you know, tighten the ship or create a routine for, um, maybe where we need to create some practical steps, you know, to reach our goal or to make any progress. Um, there might be some, some of us that have to redesign some, some, you know, old models or some outdated frameworks that we have for possibly our own routines or how we work or anything like that. This may be a time where we need to adjust some of those things. So definitely have that in mind when you're looking at um, what you're trying to work on and release during this full moon at the end of the month. Now, even more exciting than that, we finish off this month with a grand earth trine. Super exciting. So trines, no matter what element they're in, trines always bring blessings if we tap into that energy. So do a little happy dance for this grand earth trine. So it happens literally right at the end of the month. So we have the moon down in, yes, sorry, got too excited. <laughs> we have the moon down in Virgo, um, Mars, which is still hanging out in Taurus, not the most friendliest place for him. Um, but again, there's still, you know, Mars is still pushing through, our warrior planet. Mars is still trying to make things happen. It's just a little slower being in the energy of Taurus, right? So, poor guy, he's making it work, as are we. So we've got Mars over there in Taurus, um, and then Pluto in Capricorn. So those are our, that's our trine for our Earth signs. So great time for some blessings. Great time for anything that has to do with um, material gain. Um, anything that has to do with, like, practical planning. Um, organizing, um, finances, there might be a nice little boost or an opportunity that, you know, can lead to some more money down the line. The key to it, because it's an earth, it is asking you to be practical, be, be, you know, iron out all those details like we were just talking about in Virgo, have a, have a clear plan, right? We're not feeling our way through this, we're not winging it, not the element for that, this is earth. So it's all being grounded, stable, building really solid, strong foundations, right? But lean into that. And also there may be um, opportunities here to take advantage of some of your connections, right? That may be where this blessing comes from. So it may be worth it to kind of use your resources, re use your resources and to reach out. Use those connections, especially if it has anything to do with, you know, resources that can help make you money or, or anything that has to do with finances. End of the month, going to be a great time to utilize those opportunities, okay? So that's pretty much all the astrology I have for you um, for this month. Going to be an exciting month, um, lots going on. And again, this information isn't supposed to freak you out or make you think, oh God, what's happening? Blah, 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 blah. This is just info so you can make some wiser decisions for your life as we work through the month. All right, let's talk crystals. All right, so let's do the Mercury Retrograde crystals first because I feel like that's what everyone wants to know. Um, there are a whole bunch, right? So these are just my favorites. This is what I like to use. It's certainly not the end-all be-all, so adjust how you will. Um, great basic rule of thumb, pretty much anything that's kind of blue in color or blue-greeny for some, um, is going to be a great stone to use during Mercury Retrograde, right? Because it's all about communication, making sure we're understood, right? We want to make sure what we're saying matches our intentions, but also once it leaves our mouth, that the people we're talking to, the audience in front of us, is absorbing the same message we wanted to send out, right? We don't want them hearing something that we didn't say, or vice versa. So, with that being said, anything that's blue helps to boost and control your throat chakra. I was going to say heart chakra. Uh, but your throat chakra, right? So it's all about your voice, your opinions, sharing your thoughts, right? Putting yourself out there, um, expression. Um, so anything blue going to be a great thing for you. Let me silence my phone because now I'm getting all these ring-a-ding-dings. Okay, so um, my kind of go-to for Mercury Retrograde, it's probably a go-to for a lot of people, if I'm completely honest, is turquoise. So like this turquoise pendant, I definitely wore a lot during retrograde. I'm not wearing it today, obviously, but here it is. Um, I also have a bracelet that's made with uh, African 
turquoise, which is a little more a little more greeny. It's got some garnet in there as well, but it's this bad boy. So I, this I definitely wear a lot during retrogrades. Um, but again, turquoise helps to not only clear your throat chakra, um, but it, I don't want to say this, it is kind of connected to water a lot, so it's a great purifying stone. So it clears out anything that's low vibe, negativity, doubts, right? So if it's about communication, right? We, we don't want to doubt what we're saying. We want to be really strong in our convictions. Um, it also helps to boost awareness and self-realization, and that helps to make sure your message is clear, right? What is it I want? Okay, then what do I have to tell you to get you to understand or make you believe whatever it is I'm saying, right? Um, so beautiful stone for that. Um, another one I like to use a lot is chrysocolla. There's a, I have, I think it's in the living room. I know I have a big piece of it that I was trying to find, and of course, I pulled them to film this video and don't know where it is. I'm pretty sure it's in the living room. But this is, this is what Corsa, Chris Cola looks like. If it'll, come on, you can do it, camera. I believe in you. No, kind of. There we go. So that's it. So it's kind of blue-green. A lot of times it forms with malachite, so you'll see green malachite with it as well. Um, Chris Cola I love. So it's known as the wise stone. Um, one of the first things I ever read about Chrysocolla was that Cleopatra would always wear jewelry with Chrysocolla in it whenever she was going into, like, governmental meetings or negotiations. Um, because not only, it's known as the Wise Stone because it, again, throat, ch throat chakra, it helps to improve your, improve your cleverness um, and your quick thinking, your problem-solving skills. So people who have Chrysocolla on them during these types of debates tend to think of really clever compromises. Um, trend, tend to have really good problem solving skills, but Cleopatra would wear it because it also makes you really powerful in negotiations. It makes it easier for other people to buy in to what you're trying to say. So, little secret weapon if you're ever <laughs> having negotiations, pack some Chris Cola in your pocket or wear some jewelry. Um, but it helps to sweeten people to your way of thinking and to your ideas. Um, and, you know, essentially get their buy-in. So beautiful stone for that. And great for Mercury Retrograde. Because, again, you're going to get people to listen to what you have to say and agree with it. So beautiful energy for that. Um, something that maybe is not common or super obvious for a Mercury Retrograde, but something that I think is really helpful, is any of the barrels. So beryl is a type of stone, there's, and there's, whole, there's a whole array of them. Um, different impurities will make it different colors, but essentially they're all barrels. Um, so that's actually what I'm wearing today. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it. You can do it, camera. I believe in you. Focus. Maybe not. So this is Morganite. So it's a pink version of beryl. It looks like a super gemmy rose quartz. Hopefully that focused. I don't know. Couldn't see the camera. Um, but it, it literally, it just looks like a really gemmy, you know, nice clear rose quartz. Um, you can also find it in beads. So this is, I actually made this today. It's my morning project. Um, and it actually, it worked out perfectly because it has all these different barrel beads in it. So the pink beads you see are also morganite. Um, the blue ones are aquamarine. And then there's some, here. Then there's some kind of goldy goldy, greeny, yellow ones. This is Heliodor. Um, so all of them are beryl. They're all just different colors because of different mineral inclusions inside of them. Um, great, beryl in general is a great calming stone. So it helps to really alleviate stress. So if you tend to get you know, super nervous and freak out during um, Mercury retrograde, if it brings a lot of tension, any of the barrels are great, especially aquamarine. Aquamarine, because it's blue, deals with mental stress and your thought patterns. Um, it also helps to calm you when things go a little too quickly. So if they feel like things are starting to pick up and you're still kind of, you're starting to trail behind, it helps you to keep calm and not freak out and not go into panic mode, right? So it keeps you a little little more even keeled um, on the mental level. Um, Morganite, pink, connects it to the heart chakra, so it's a little more emotional. So emotional stress is calmed by Morganite. It's also a great love stone if anyone's trying to bring in some love and some sweetness to your life. Morganite, beautiful stone for that. It actually, if you don't know, it was originally the stone that was used in wedding rings before diamonds became a thing. Morganite was the original stone that would go into a wedding ring. Um, but it's a great stone to open your heart, alleviate emotional stress, 
and again bring that kind of soft lovey energy so you know think you can almost think of it as like a boosted rose quartz a very calming rose quartz also which we love um, and then Heliodor um, with its kind of golden yellow color it's actually attributed to more leadership skills and um, how you engage with people around you it also does help to give you a little um, a little boost of hope and a sense of possibility um, so it's a great stone for manifesting because it also boosts determination so not only are you more optimistic about what you're trying to create or what you're attracting to you you also have a little extra drive to make sure it happens um, so great manifesting stone i have a friend of mine who actually likes to keep heliodor tucked in her bra when she's manifesting um, so jealous of that if i could wear a bra if i had a bra it'd be full of stones. I'd probably have like a big, I'd have like a, I'd set a double D's just because it's full of stones. And I probably wouldn't even think about it and get home, take it off, and I would just drop all these rocks on the floor. Um, I could totally see that. That would be me. Um, but yeah, that's my little spiel on barrel. Um, those are kind of my go-tos when it comes to retrograde, specifically mercury retrograde. I also wanted to give a little shout out to some stones that I've been working with a lot recently um, that have really like helped me out um, they're a little new to me, but I definitely, I don't know what I'd do without them right now. So I thought I'd talk about these guys also. Um, so first one I'm going to talk about quickly is this bad boy. Uh, so this is Golden Healer. So it is a type of quartz. Um, it has these, you know, healed inclusions. So sometimes it's really goldy and yellowy in color. Sometimes it'll be a mix of clear white quartz um, with some gold patches in it. This one has a lot of iron, so it has like a lot of red, orangey inclusions in it, like... Yeah, that, I love that angle. That's bomb. What I honestly, what I was really drawn to with Golden Healer, literally like it says, it's a great healing crystal. It literally helps to activate and balance all of your chakras. So great stone. No matter how you may feel out of balance or where you feel wonky, Golden Healer has you covered. It balances everything with this beautiful golden light. It's a great thing to meditate with. Um, if you do crystal healing or receive crystal healing, it's a great stone to work with. Um, I've, I've been taking it to my yoga class. So I'll have it on my mat with me while I'm doing my business. Um, I've like had it in bed with me while I'm meditating. So I'm either holding it. Um, I do have a thing with holding points when I meditate, trying to direct energy. We'll talk about that with the next stone. Um, but yeah, this, this little bad boy has gotten a whole lot of use recently. Um, last stone I want to talk about is Ocean Jasper. And I will say... There are so many people who are obsessed with Ocean Jasper, love Ocean Jasper. This is the first, these are the first, and actually the first and only pieces I have of Ocean Jasper. Um, I'm kind of addicted now, if I'm completely honest. Um, these I actually got specifically to meditate with. Um, and there's a, there's a real specific way I actually meditate with them. Um, but the energy of Ocean Jasper is super helpful and beneficial because it does it it kind of adjusts to what you need um, so it has a really powerful duality to it because it's made with you know between the elements of fire and water so obviously it's made deep in the ocean at the crust so it's you've got this fiery hot earth element hitting the ocean water so you have those two opposites kind of fusing and meeting and creating this really awesome stone so they honestly can look super super different right like you wouldn't even think these could have been the same stone, but they, they literally are. It just depends on what's happening during the formation. Um, with that duality, it can either help to calm and soothe. Um, if you are feeling worried and anxious, it helps to nurture you and support you through those times. If you feel low energy, it helps to bring you back to life and pep you up and give you that drive and motivate you again. So it, it really can do either or. It just depends what you need in that particular moment. When I meditate with them, I actually like to hold them in specific directions. So like, you know, I always like to lie down when I meditate, do it how you want. Um, but when I'm lying down, I will, I'll have them in my, like I'll have my palms up and I'll have them lying in my palm. But this guy, the dark purple one, and again, it's just choice, but it's, it's more the direction I want to talk about. So my right hand, I will have this point pointing out. So like when I'm lying there, it's pointing away from me. So it's pointing outward. And then this guy, I will have on my left hand pointing in, right? So our left side is our feminine side. Right side is our masculine side. So with your left side, this is where we attract, where we pull in versus our right side, which is where we're putting out what we send out into the world. So especially if 
energy is stuck, especially if you feel stuck. I don't know why I'm not making any progress. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, and nothing is happening. Sometimes that is all energetic. So I like, I purposely like to meditate with these particular stones in this particular orientation so that on my left side, I'm bringing energy in, pulling things toward me, whether it's manifestations or it's just, you know, calming, kindness, happiness. I'm pulling that into me where on the right hand, sending out, right? Because the point is pointing out. So that I'm getting rid of the tension, the stress, or any stagnant energy that's just gumming up the works, we're helping to push that out so it can start to move and shift the flow within us, right? Um, I don't know why that makes me think of the, the anime, uh, the avatar, when he's learning about the chakras and the pools of water. Essentially, you're like clearing it out so the water can move freely through all the channels, right? So, and it, when I talk about this, you don't have to do this with Ocean Jasper. That's just what I choose to do. You literally could do this with anything. You could use you could use clear quartz. You, any points you have, you can totally do this with. Um, you could even customize it where, like, let's say you were trying to attract in specifically love or romance or you know passion. You could totally use you know a rose quartz or or a pink kyanite, um, not kyanite, kunzite, pink kunzite tower. You could totally do that. Um, and if you're trying to build stronger protection, you know, you could do this with, on your right hand with like black tourmaline or onyx, um, anything like that. So money, you could, you could put like a pyrite um, or citrine point in your left hand. So you can customize that however you need to. That's just my little tips and tricks for that. Um, but I like to do that just if thing again, if things feel tight, if I just feel wound up or progress isn't being made and I kind of feel stuck. I like to meditate with the points in that orientation to just to help to move the energy around and to get things to flow again if I don't feel like I'm in sync and, and vibing as I should be. Um, so just things to think about for you. Um, I'm going to say that's everything we're going to talk about today. I do kind of want to pull a card because, again, that's what the channel is all about, so I'm throwing my notebook out. Um, Alright, okay, so uh, now that that's all done, we're going to pull a card just to kind of close out this reading. Uh, I have the, what is this, uh, the Golden Universal Tarot deck. So we'll, we'll pull a card from here just to close everything out. Oh, and there it is. Alright, Nine of Wands in reverse. Honestly, a beautiful energy as we go through February. Um, it's not really negative or positive, which is nice. Uh, this is a, definitely an energy of being willing to surrender, being willing to release, right? You know, upright, this particular character is steadfast, holding his ground. You know, he may have been waiting a very long time, but this is what he knows, and he's going to stand here until the battle is over. In the reverse, it's time to release that energy. It's time to... You know, it's been too long. Let it go. Let it down. Be open to new things. We talked about that with some of those aspects. This is a great month to kind of be willing to be flexible. You know, be willing to do things differently. Be open to change. With all these planets in Uranus, or not in Uranus, in Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus, um, Aquarius loves to do things differently. It loves to do things out of the box. You know, Uranus brings sudden change and like change out of the blue. So you may be really learning how to adapt this month. And the best thing for you to do is to let it happen. Roll with the punches. If you try to cling to anything too tightly this month, that will create more tension than it's worth. So be willing to go with the flow. Be willing to try things differently. Be willing to do something new. Um, even if that may not be the thing that ends up being, you know, the ultimate truth, try. It's going to lead you somewhere different and it's going to lead you in a direction of growth. So beautiful. I couldn't think of a better way to close this reading. Um, but again, I love you guys. Smash that like button. Make sure you are subscribed and have your notification bell so you know when your February reading pops up. Um, they definitely should start rolling out at the end of this week. Um, so yeah. Stay tuned, and I will see you guys in our next chariot chat. Bye.